Fanatics JW is a veteran of CSGO. Nearly a million dollars of prize money earnings in his career, multiple trophies, including three majors and a lot of MVPs. The guy knows how to play CSGO. <laughs> So what can we learn from him? Let's have a look at how JW plays DE Inferno and see what we all can take away from his plays. Enjoy. This video is sponsored by a gaming browser. Actually, this is extremely cool. Welcome to Opera GX, the world's first browser specifically designed for gamers. That's us. You can enhance your performance with GX control, control your network usage so you can be sure about a stable connection. Very helpful when you're streaming, gaming, or yeah, doing anything of that sort. Or you can manage your RAM usage as well. But what's most important for us in CSGO, you can control your CPU usage. CSGO has a very heavy focus on your CPU load. That's a few more FPS for us. Let's go. They also offer GX Corner, where you can stay up to date with free games, the best game deals, new releases, news from the gaming world, all of that easily accessible gathered in one place. A sweet integration for Twitch directly from the sidebar, messenger integrations such as WhatsApp, Facebook, Instagram, even Twitter is there. And of course, Discord. They have their own server that you can join where they organize some giveaways and a lot more. The browser is fully customizable and it already comes with sort of a dark mode enabled. You're still not convinced they have so much more on the table for you. A free VPN, Adblock is already in it too. Honestly, a crazy good browser that surpassed anything I've seen thus far. So next time I'm streaming, go do it via this browser and have a look. Let me know how it is in chat. You can download it via the link in the description. Enjoy. I've investigated the entire match of JW on DE Inferno in an FPL game, where he played versus the likes of Simple, Olofmeister and Smuya, by the way. And so it was a formidable opposition. There's a few big takeaways. First, let's start off with the habits of JW. Whenever JW is holding from T-stairs, he tucks himself a bit farther back into the lower part of the stairs, which makes him unable to be spotted in case he's crouched. Couple that with his crosshair placement being on the perfect spot when he pre-aims, it's a rather deadly combination. When he releases the crouch button, his crosshair is on the enemy's head. When he crouches, he isn't visible. He does that a lot. In fact, he does it so often, it's actually ridiculous after a few rounds. Either with the orb, deagle, you name it. It keeps happening over and over again. It's not a flawless, super special 3000 Superman angle, but definitely an annoying one to play against. And he for sure nets a surprise kill or two from there when playing against an aggressive CT player. When JW has an AWP and is holding top middle from T-stairs, he usually only plays this one tight angle waiting for a CT to overcommit from the boiler side. I will take a different approach, an approach that gives you a little bit more control over middle, and there's been a lot more different approaches than I've seen over the years. That angle, however, is very passive and safe, but also one that doesn't reward you often. But when it does, it's a very easy opening. Inferno is a really close quarter map, and since JW is one of the very few AWPers that also favors the big green on the T side, this is what I could see. He always avoids the apartments and second mid area. Not one round out of 15 he goes there, which makes kind of perfect sense. Instead, here are the three peaks or angles he takes to open up or control the map. When having a top spawn like this, he aggro peaks directly banana like this. It's good to catch an enemy off guard with the timing. When having a rather top spawn again, he also tends to go towards banana tree to hold top banana and secure the crucial control of the map. Then as a third little play, he also tends to run banana and with a good movement jumps onto the wood pile to hold a very tight angle towards top banana to catch a CT peeking it. And that's what he does on the T side. He really doesn't do anything else. Anything else happening just goes off of the information that he gets fed from his teammates. Besides, have a clip of Xantaris burning himself in this match, even though he has a smoke in hand. Solid entertainment. <laughs> On the CT side, there is only one thing that is reoccurring, and that is this peak from top middle down to Mexico or bottom middle. It's a peak you need to be confident about. However, it's also not a big risk. Only take this peak if you have a comfortable spawn though. He peaks a bit farther back towards the back wall, not towards the close wall in front of him. Remember that. Anyone running out of bottom middle should be dead. 
If someone jumps or runs into Mexico, he can see him as well. Adjust the pre-aim and net an important opening frag. Other than that, he just plays default angles. He really doesn't do anything special on the CT side video. He just tends to peak a couple of different angles. But remember, for this habit play that he shows on the CT side, you need to be able to hit your shot. Once you're spotted and tagged, you will get slowed. So getting away against a good player on the spot is rather hard. And this round was rather fun to spectate as well. Enjoy some FPL and JW brilliance. Now the utility that he uses. Most of his flashbangs are freestyle, with the exception of two lineups. However, see these freestyle flashes, check them out, and kind of try to memorize them. Even if they're freestyle, they're close to perfection. The first flash he throws is a flash to help the banana player peek into B pool in case of a stack or similar. It also flashes the CT guy or the coils player, which actually works out perfect in this case, as the enemy does the infamous Astralis stack. A flash for the banana corner to get any holding opponent off the angle, or even net a cheeky kill. A flash that you can throw, honestly, there's so many varieties to this, but it's a flash to get any aggressive enemy AWPA or rifle blind, uh, so you can either go bottom mid right side to play an aggressive angle, or jump down into Mexico to take peaks and control mid early. Just avoid that quick entry that CTs most of the time try to get. When you're tucked into the tree position on banana, you really want to clear top banana sandbags or anyone aiming into banana. This flash that he throws here is such an obvious flash. But let's be real, who as a CT checks the top right corner for a flashbang coming there on the screen? Plus with the background, it's kind of camouflaged really well. Here's a lineup from T-Stairs where you go into this corner close to the ceiling, aim as shown, and then simple left click jump throw. It's a flash to take support on early banana aggression for your T-side teammates. And last but not least, a lineup from middle to help a mid take by flashing short slash quad. Tuck yourself into this position as shown, aim as shown, and simple left click jump throw again. Profit. So, what else can we learn from the Swedish star? Don't repeat the same angle over and over again, you will eventually get punished. Patience is key. Look at this. And honestly, JW has still got it. This 3k was absolutely nuts. I was like, what the fuck when I saw it in a replay? Enjoy. And in the third round, he had such a smooth one versus two that I needed to show that. Just look at it. He scoped close apps and is ready to walk with it the whole way to not make noise. But as soon as his teammates, though, gets contacted to players, he starts running. Now his teammates falls and he has the info where both the players are, whereas the enemy knows as well because they heard the steps. Instead of panicking, he slows down to not make any further noise, knowing the enemy heard him running apps earlier. Walks close, really close to the right wall, so a CT peeking from short wouldn't see him or his scope. Then jumps up on the balcony to see if there's a play on short. He creates a rather unusual off angle, especially as a T coming out of apps. Who would expect a T opera on the ceiling peeking short? Well, I definitely wouldn't. It would definitely take an adjustment of the crosshair and then, well, and in that adjustment time frame, I'd be dead. He gets the kill. Now not both players have shown a short, so he drops into pit. He expects therefore a peak from a long is correct and wins the round. So many small details in there, but so calm and collected the way he played it. I loved watching that.
Well, and that's it. What can we learn from JW? Be confident, be cheeky, know your flashes, and know how to flash. Do some unconventional plays once in a while, whatever the opposition may look like, and enjoy the game. I hope you enjoyed the video. Let me know what you think of it, if you want more, and if yes, what player are we investigating next? Yes, I already have Simple on my list, as well as Saibu. Don't worry about that. Thanks for watching. I'm gonna leave you with the ending round of the game. I don't know what it is, but whenever JW plays, there's something interesting happening. Enjoy the cheeky randomness that he produced. I don't know. It's just so good. Hey, if you enjoyed the video, please do not forget to leave a like, a comment and subscribe with the bell so you will be notified when I upload new videos. Thank you.